Hi everyone, my name is Patty Alaka and I'm here to talk about tools for living. Today I feel like the Lord put on my heart to speak about parenting the inner child. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me today. Um, as I've mentioned, I am a Christian and I follow the Lord and the Lord tells us to pray without ceasing. So before we get started, I ask that you join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much for being here with us today. Lord, thank you for bringing whoever is watching this video and myself together. You've told us that when there are two or more gathered in your name, there you are. So we know that you're right here right now, Lord. I ask that you heal us fully and completely, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, Lord, um, and even relationally, Lord. Um, teach us what it is that you would like us to know, not my words, but your words, Lord, not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you so much for joining today. Uh, parenting the inner child is a concept that um, roughly was started, I want to say, early in the century by Carl Jung. Um, he would, he was actually the first person that talked about the divine child archetype. And then, um, in the eighties, um, inner child work, uh, became very popular, uh, by names of John Bradshaw and Lucia Capuchion. Um, they've written some really good books and, um, I was blessed to, um, study under a wonderful man by the name of Carl Clark. Uh, who was so well versed in um, the states of consciousness of the inner child. And um, he taught us so well, us therapists and healers, how it is to be in touch with that child that lives within us. His name was Carl. And so he would often walk around telling us about little Carl, as if little Carl was literally in the room. And so he taught us to refer to that part of us, um, that Part of our child as little. So I would learn to, you know, talk about little Patty. And, and what that really is, uh, as we've talked about in past videos, our subconscious mind is very powerful. And so um, throughout our entire life, um, from our earliest memory, and even far back before we even could remember, we actually deposited all kinds of ways of beings, patterns, thought processes, everything into our sub subconscious mind and is wired in our neurocircuitry. And so some of those patterns are very positive and they've carried us through life. Some of the, those patterns may be neutral and some of those patterns could be very negative. You know, people that have had very harsh upbringings um, would have those negative patterns. And unless they've worked through a lot of those issues, those patterns are still with us today. And so when we talk about parenting the inner child, it's just a wonderful, precious way of helping us to be aware that it is never too late to have a happy childhood. Truly, it is never too late to have a happy childhood. If you did not have a happy childhood, and if you had all kinds of experiences that were negative, that perhaps you think about from time to time, or maybe um, you give credit to why you are the way that you are, I have news for you. It is never too late to have a happy childhood. And guess what? You can pick up where your parents left off. If you're an adult, or if you're watching this video as a teenager, or even as a, you know, a pretty grown up child, you can take over where your parents left off. You can be the parent to that little child, that little boy, that little girl that lives within you um, as if you are literally their parent. You know, I, I'm sure people have heard, you know, I've been in the business, I've been a therapist well over 25 years working with clients and often, you know, Clients will, will say, you know, well, I'm like this because of the way my parents were with me or, you know, um, but a lot of reference to how the parents were. And absolutely, um, we've all come from different kinds of upbringings, but the reality is we can learn how to take over where our parents left off. We can be that parent. And that's very exciting. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So um, when I talk with children, when I work with children, I like 
uh, to encourage them to think about uh, four main thoughts. What's their happiest thought? What's their um, thought that makes them feel really scared? What's uh, something that makes them feel really sad? And what's something that makes them feel really angry? Um, and those are some, you know, I want to say big categories that we can help us get in touch with that little child that lives within us. Um, so you may want to spend some time thinking about those thoughts. You may already be aware of some current themes that live in your life. Um, you know, uh, it's not, uh, the inner child is not just uh, a wounded child. The inner child has a lot of really wonderful experiences as well. So when we look at the inner child, we want to look at what are some fun things that that child has been through in the past? And also, what are some of the negative things that that child has been through in the past? Um, when we're doing really deep core work, we want to really get in touch with some of the major themes in our life. And the way that you can do that either is to just sit and be quiet and breathe. Um, you can do some meditation or some relaxation techniques um, as I've talked about in other videos. Um, or you can do some journaling. Or you can talk about it with a really good friend. But become aware of what some of those um, big themes are that are going on in your life. I can give you some examples of my life. Um, a positive theme is that um, from the time I was a very little girl, I went to dancing school. So I have lived my entire life loving dancing. When I listen to music, my body is always wanting to move and dance. Um, so that's a, that's a positive, pretty big theme in my life. Also, from the time I was uh, as far back as I can remember, I swam. So as I've mentioned before, I'm a big swimmer. So when I, my, my body hits the water, I have all kinds of memories of when I swam as a child. So those are some positive themes that go on in my life today as an example. Um, some negative themes are um, when I hear a loud sound, um, like if someone drops something, you know, like a dish or a glass, my entire body jumps. Um, my upbringing, there was a lot of loud sounds, a lot of things were broken. And so uh, to this day, I still jump when I hear a loud sound. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, it can't be repaired. It just takes some mindfulness. I, you know, I just sit and work with that little child and just remember um, that those were some experiences that I experienced back then, um, but I don't experience them now. And that's where EMDR and some tapping comes in handy, um, some mindfulness, some journaling. Um, and another example is, it's funny, uh, I, I kind of joke, half joke, half serious, that um, I have three brothers, two older brothers, and one younger brother. And whenever I have an issue in life, I can always trace it back to my little brother being born. And I love him. He's a great guy. Um, but the theme that, just as an example, is that um, I always had this feeling throughout life that I was going to be replaced. So um, those are some pretty... Uh, core themes that have gone on in my life. And as I, as I mention this to you, I want to invite you to think about what are some of the core um, issues that you have dealt through, dealt with in your life. Um, you may just want to stop the video now and just take a journal and just write some of those things down. But it's a time for you to really pay attention to that. Um, be aware of when your first memory was when you had that experience. And then, you know, just kind of breathe through it. Remind yourself that that was then and this is now. Um, it's really important that um, when we do inner child work, when we are parenting that child, uh, we don't allow that child to just take over and just say, you know, ah, this is just how I am because this is the way I was brought up. It doesn't have to be that way. Just hold and love that precious child. Um, set some appropriate limits and boundaries. Um, it, it does take some mindfulness to do that. Um, and it does take some work. Does some does take some time to do that. But you can do that wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Um, but just start to pay attention to that little child. Um, sometimes when I work with clients, I invite them to either take a stuffed animal or a doll or a pillow 
and just have that pillow sit next to them and, and represent that little child that they were back then and what might be some of the things that they would like to say to that child and what might be some things that that child wants to say to them. I have a very dear friend um, that when she turned 50, she and her best friend went out to buy the most beautiful communion dress and she has it hanging in her closet to this day. And she did that because when she was a little girl in second grade, she remembered how all the other little girls were dressed beautifully and she was not. Um, her family did not have the money to, to buy a beautiful dress. So um, she always felt less than throughout her entire life. So her way of taking care of her little child was to replace that memory of wearing this dingy dress to wearing this beautiful dress. So it's a way of replacing our memories, um, depositing different things in our subconscious mind, po depositing positive thoughts and positive feelings as we work in that deep way. So it, I encourage you to uh, start to pay attention, start to have a dialogue with your precious child that lives within you. Um, I, you know, I've talked about in the past the zero to 10 scale, where 10 is the best we've ever felt in our life and zero is the worst. When we are above a five, we pretty much tend to be in an adult state of consciousness. We're empowered, we're in victor, uh, we're able to tackle the challenges of our life. But when we're below a five, we tend to be more in victim and blame, but guess what? We're also very much in a child state of consciousness. Even though we're an adult, we're very much child. So I encourage you to, in those moments, if you can, as you ask yourself throughout the day, what is your number? If you're below a five, you're probably in a child state of consciousness and that's okay. Just wrap your loving arms around yourself and you might even want to take a pillow or a doll or a stuffed animal to just kind of represent that child that was there back then and, and just love them. And there may be all kinds of emotions that come up when you do this, but that's okay. It's just all part of the process. We are very complicated human beings. And when we can be aware of what's happening, we can... Um, help to parent and love and be there for our child, our inner child that lives within, um, and not leave that child hanging and um, feeling neglected for the rest of their life. So I just think that's so exciting that it's just never too late to have a happy childhood. Right here, right now, you can start taking good care of that precious little child that feels sad or scared or lonely um, or afraid or mad. Um, so. I hope that you're thinking about some of these things and you're getting some really good ideas. I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions about any of this material or any comments, please reach out to me. I'll leave my email in the comments section. Um, my email is clinicalpastoralcounseling3, number three, at gmail.com. That's clinicalpastoralcounseling3 at gmail.com. So, um, as always, it's really a good idea if you find that you have really deep work and um, it's feeling unsettling, I really encourage you to reach out to a therapist. You can also reach out to me. I am seeing clients. I'd be happy to work with you. Or you can just continue to play all the videos that I have made. Um, they will give you uh, wonderful tools to deal with life in all the struggles that you're going through in your life. So um, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else I, I really want to talk about. I guess the, the main thing really is to just pay attention to your mindset. Be aware. So right now I have to say, you know, I'm going to go inside my own self. I encourage you to go inside your own self right now. And this is not a judgment thing. It's just simply to be aware of what's happening. So let's take a moment to be aware of what our number is. This isn't, um, a competition. It's just simply to be aware of where you're at. Um, so what's your number? Zero to 10. 10 the best you've ever felt in your life. Zero the worst. I would say I'm pretty much an eight and a half. Um, I am aware that this is pretty complicated material and I'm really wanting you to be aware and excited about it as I am. Um, just hoping that it's coming across the way um, 
I'm passionate about it. Uh, so that may be some of what's getting in the way of that. Um, but I, you know, feel, I want to say, feel free to reach out to me at any time if you have any questions. Um, but what is your number right now? And if you're below a five, if you find that you are below a five throughout the day or over the next coming days, I encourage you to be aware of that little child that lives within. And even when you're not below a five, be aware of that little child. What are some of the positive um, thoughts and feelings and themes of your life? And sometimes when you're feeling really sad, if you can revisit some of those themes that are really positive, they can help you to feel really good. Um, the child is um, is so full of life. If you look at a child, um, you know, I work in a an elementary school and oh, these precious beings are so beautiful. I just love to see each and every one of them. Their spirit is just so free and um, they're just so full of full of love and light. And Jesus loved the little children. And we're going to go over some scriptures today. Um, but I really want to encourage you to get in touch with that precious little child that lives within you and see if you can become that bright eyed, precious child that lives within you. And when you are in touch with that wounded child, that's okay too. just wrap your loving arms around him or her and be there for him or her like you've never been before. Um, when you go to sleep at night, you can hold a pillow, you can hold a stuffed animal, and um, you can, you know, kind of visualize holding that precious little child that lives within so that that child does not feel alone. Um, we also are so blessed as Christians to have the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us. So the Father aspect of the Trinity is so awesome. When we're feeling like we're that little child, we have Abba Father all the time. He is with us everywhere we go, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing. Abba Father, our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be his name. He is with us at all times always. So remember that Father God can take good care of us. And all you need to do is just say, hey God, help me. Abba Father, I need you. I'm having trouble with this or I'm feeling pain with that. Um, ask the Lord to come into your heart and help you with whatever it is that you're going through. We're also blessed um, to have the Lord's mother. Jesus, when he um, was on the cross, he looked at his beloved um, disciple, John, and he said, woman, which is what they called women back then, woman, this is your son, take your son. And then he said to John and disciple, you take your mother. So when we read that in the word, we know that we're so blessed that the Lord gave us his mother, Mary. So, um, you know, I know there's often some controversy, whether you're Catholic, whether you're not, whether you're not even a Christian, it's okay. The Lord gave us his mother, Mary. You don't have to be Catholic to love his mother. The Lord in his Bible gave us his mother. So remember that the Lord's mother, Mary, is with us all the time, always. And we don't pray to Mary. We, can, we pray to the Lord, but we can ask Mary to be our intercessor to pray for us. So just remember that Abba Father is with us all the time, and um, the Lord's mother Mary is with us all the time. So I'm going to go over some scriptures now um, that the Lord put on my heart, and um, I'm going to read each of them twice so that you can really soak into these words. Uh, the Lord loved the little children, and so I just want to remind you again to get in touch with that beautiful childlike nature that lives within you. And when there's a negative theme, that's okay. Look at how you can heal that negative theme. Ask the Lord to come in to heal that precious wounded child and you be as an instrument and love that precious child that lives within you. So in Psalm 8-2, the Lord says, through the praise of children, 
and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. I'm going to read it again. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avengers. You know, I think about how happy children are when they have that contagious smile and that contagious laughter. That carries such a high charge of vibration that nothing and no one can pull them down. And so that's, I believe, what the Lord is telling us, to get in touch with that childlike nature. And that will be... Um, such a high vibrating quality of love and light and grace from the Lord that um, the enemy can't pull us down. No foe can pull us down. Um, nothing and no one can pull us down. So get in touch with that childlike nature that's so pure and so holy and so loved by God. And in Matthew 18 to 6, he says, Truly, I tell you, Unless you change and become like a little child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. So you could just hear how much the Lord loved little children and he could so connect with their spirit. And he said, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And in Deuteronomy 11, 18, 19, the Lord says, Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you are walking alone on the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So the Lord is telling us to tell our biological children, but also if we don't have biological children, to tell our inner child the word and all the wonderful, beautiful themes of the word and how the Lord is speaking to us. He's speaking to us every moment of every hour of every day. And all we need to do is tune into him and allow his Holy Spirit to be with us, to give us revelation and insight, to allow Abba Father to be with us, to heal our wounds, uh, to allow the Lord Jesus to just instruct us, guide our footsteps. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk alone in the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So uh, get a Bible or read the Bible, listen to the Bible, and just uh, invite all these beautiful scriptures into your mind. They will renew your mind and they will heal that precious little inner child that lives within. And in John 19, 26, 27, this is when the Lord was on the cross and he spoke to John and he spoke to his mother. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that moment on, the disciple took her into his home. Remember, the Lord's mother Mary is with us at all time always. And we can just invite her into our homes as well. To be our mother, just as the Lord instructed us to take her in. To be our mother. So we have Abba Father and we have his mother. So I thank you so much for being here with me today. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, any comments. I would love to hear from you. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care.